Welcome to the Endless Entrepreneur's YouTube channel. My name is Luke Henson. I am an eBay seller, Poshmark seller, and now a Mercari seller, uh, as well as a real estate investor. I uh, buy and hold long-term uh, rental properties, and I also work full-time in the corporate world. So uh, I kind of document those three things through this channel. Uh, if you are here for the first time, welcome. Uh, topic of this video, we're going to give five. I have five right now, right now, quick tips. Probably be some bonus ones sprinkled in there as we talk through them, but five quick tips on really how how to optimize your workstation if you sell on any of these three platforms. We're going to focus a lot on um, photography and handling through these tips. Um, so it is transferable across different niches, no matter what types of things you sell in, this can be applicable. Uh, so there should be some value here. Uh, hopefully it'll help you in your business. If you can just take one thing away, then this it will be worth it for you. Um, this is live, so you'll see I'll do some Q&A at the end, and I'll be interacting with people throughout the video. Uh, if you're re-watching this uh, after it was live, that's why I'm interacting. Um, I will get to the tips up front here and uh, save the Q&A for the end to give that value up front. And it looks like we got Steve Rakin in the house uh, who... Uh, Coming from a, the eBay reselling world is definitely one of the OGs on uh, YouTube here. So thank you. Uh, $2 super chat there from Steve. Appreciate it, man. Really, really do. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right in, give these tips, and then we'll uh, we'll have some Q&A towards the end. And uh, really this topic was uh, kind of was inspired by it, so to speak. I've done similar videos on this a long time ago. Uh, but today, yesterday, I overhauled uh, my prep room here. I uh, really got it even more efficient than it was. Um, I personally haven't done photos uh, for my reselling business in quite a long time. And very recently, um, I've shifted some of the model and I'm doing a little more of the photos than I was before because I've outsourced some different tasks. I'm kind of trading time uh, there. But anyways, jump into that later. Let's get into the tips here. Uh, so the first one, I think this is really important is that you work in sequence. Um, I know early on when I was reselling, uh, my, my workstation didn't make a lot of sense. Um, I kind of was just working in my garage, wherever I had things set up. And then at one point I was working in a bedroom, wherever it kind of just was. But when I talk about working in sequence, you really should focus on either left to right or right to left. Or if it's gonna be like in a circular pattern, it really should be following um, still kind of like a left to right, maybe around the room. Um, it, it's really important that visually and just as you're working something through, right, that it's hitting each step. And you're not having to repeat or go backwards. It's really tough to like go here and then back here and then back here. It's much better to just keep working through, have each place be intentional or purposeful for what you're doing, um, for whatever that batch or that task is, so you can keep moving and you're not kind of uh, getting in the way of your old space, doing a new task in an old space where it's you're really not designed for that. Um, it just it really will speed it up as you go, having that left to right mentality. Um, you can see my thumbnail with this video. I have the, my setup and really I'm able to do flat lays, uh, mannequin shots, and then I have my photo cube that's right there to the right, but it all still just kind of has photos there. I move to the left of what you'll see in that photo. I'm you know bagging and tagging whatever's gonna go in my inventory. If I need any measurements, they happen right there. And then I keep moving to the right and I have my bin set up where it's gonna pack. And then moving from the bin, they actually end up right here. It's almost like that U shape left to right and the bins end up here. So not a lot of touching left to right, very efficient. Um, I just think that's important because a lot of times that back and forth when it's not in sequence just really can chew up your time. And you know, we, we talk about all the time that the time you your stuff, the time you take to invest in your business, that's your ROI a lot of times, especially when you're doing everything yourself. Uh, so that's tip number one is really have sequence in mind, whether it's left to right, right to left, whatever, however your brain works, however you like to think, but just make sure you're kind of having that workflow, you know, that manufacturing style workflow, especially for something like reselling where every segment of it is really um, standardized and the same and repetitive is that's really beneficial for repetitive type tasks. So that's one. Two is, and this might seem very obvious, but I find myself being very bad at this. Um, even, and that's why I have to kind of reform my setups, restock things a lot, is to keep all of your supplies within reaching distance of each station or sequence you're in, right? So maybe you've got two or three stations of the different steps through your prepping process, right? Don't have all your supplies for all the steps in one spot, right? Have the supplies that go to each step with each station, right? So that you're not constantly going back and forth, again, that left to right thing, right? Not disrupting it, is have those, you know, scissors in place when you need to trim something up, right? Have the lint roller next to it when you need to grab that before the photos, have it next to your photo area. Um, have your tape and uh, or your labels or whatever it is you're gonna label inventory with near where your bins and your packing are, right? Make sure that it's lined up and your supplies are within reaching distance so that as you're at that station, you're not wasting, you're not wasting steps to go get it, it's just a quick reach, boom, knock it out, right? 
not in your way, but and that's why I like uh, shelving a lot. I like to have shelving kind of eye level or above, especially if it's like a table workstation where I'm packing or measuring. It's really nice to have some of those supplies just kind of eye level. So it's a quick grab, fix it, and it's back. Then it's out of your way. Um, so I it just, it, it kind of seems obvious, but really I do a, personally, I do a pretty bad job of it. I, I try to get better at, it. I get moving so fast and I'll set something down or my worst one is I'll put something in my pocket. Uh, so I don't know how you guys have to do, I do it with markers all the time. So I'll be like, mark something up and I quick throw up my pocket, move on to the next step. And then I come back to do the next item. I'm like, where the heck is my marker? And then you, you know, you end up patting your, your legs down. You end up, oh crap, it's in my pocket. Um, so that happens to me quite frequently, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so number two is just keep those supplies closed. It will speed up your workflow. Um, number three is design your workstation with the end of your process in mind. Um, I've gotten a lot better at this as the years have gone on. It's kind of difficult when you think about this, especially like if you're operating out of an apartment or maybe you're storing your inventory someplace a decent distance from where you're doing all your prep work. Like your surroundings may limit this, but when at all possible, like in this room right now, I have my photo station, I have my kind of like uh, standing desk, so I'm doing like my measurements, my bagging and tagging, and then my bins, and they're kind of right in the shelves in here. Now that'll change when it fills up in here. I need to do someplace else. Um, but at that point, I honestly might move some of my photo stuff to where my next spot to fill inventory is because it's so it's just so much better to have that workflow end where it needs to end and not be like, OK, I did my photos. I bagged it, tagged it. I put it in my bins and oh, now I got to walk my bins down the stairs, out the yard into wherever. Right. Which I do sometimes. That's a lot of wasted time and movement, especially when you're trying just to knock it out and get it done and move on to your next like total task. So really thinking about designing the end in mind um, can be very, very valuable to your business. Uh, I, I really put this into practice with pallets. Um, so now that I pretty much exclusively buy in bulk, um, I, you know, I, I pretty much take like anywhere from two to eight pallets a month, you know, big Gaylord boxes. Um, like I just uh, just took in like 1500 items, two big, uh, pretty big pallets in my garage yesterday. But I've designed my garage where literally my pallets come in. Um, the guy loads them off the truck. Um, I give him his tip. He actually wheels them in for me. I have a pallet jack, but he helps me. Um, I get them in the garage, in the staging area. I already have all of my extra bins I use to sort are literally right where the pallets drop off. I unpack the pallets into the bins. The bins then come right back out of the garage into my car. And then I go meet uh, contractors to give them to do their photographs and or they come and get them right from there. So least amount of touching possible bins. It comes in, unload in the bins, break them down, get them out of the garage and then boom onto the next step. Um, so just designing with the end in mind there, least amount of touches, least amount of effort, saving time, every second counts. I think is really, really important. And sometimes it like one of the things that, these bins right here, it took me forever to switch these bins because I had like a hundred plus of these slightly bigger bins, but they made me wildly inefficient and it didn't really fit my new, um, it didn't really fit my new model uh, in the way that I was trying to store things on my shelving and stuff. So like I designed with the end of mine, knowing that eventually I wanted to get to these. So, you know, I started buying those and unpacking my pallets into those slowly, hand them to my uh, contractor. So that as I got the inventory back, I had the new bins to put in and slowly phase out the old ones. So still just, you know, not workstation, so to speak, but you're just always designing with the end in mind, like the end of your workflow in mind. Um, so anyways, so that is three. So first, just to kind of recap here, is to work in sequence, right? Think about your workstation from a left to right, right to left perspective. Um, keep all of your supplies next to each applicable step in the workstation so they're within reaching distance, right? You're not wasting time. And then designing with the end in mind, making sure that you're thinking about the last step of your workflow and that it all makes sense and pieces together there. Um, so that's three. And uh, Backyard Flipper, I do see your question. I will get to that at the end, I promise. Um, so two more. So tip four. And I saw I keep looking over here. I have my whiteboard and stuff written down here. It is, um, I'm sorry, my handwriting is pretty bad here. Oh, sorry. So least amount of touches. Uh, I think this is huge. And actually, Chris over on Daily Refinement talks about this a lot. I think he's he's a much better process person than I am. I love process, but he's a process nut. Um, but he talks a lot about not touching something twice, right? Not having to like retouch it or to redo a task, right? Making sure that you're handling that piece of inventory as few times as possible from start to finish, right? That makes the most productivity, which is why I like the whole concept of like photo here, move it. Like and for my case, and you might have a better sequence. Maybe you do measurements and pricing, put it in your computer, then you do photos and add it later. But what I, you know, I mean, it's like photos, measurements, bagging inventory, 
into the bin. Load photos in the Dropbox. My VA then puts the listings up and they're live. Done. I don't touch it again until it sells. So for me, it's like that's three steps that I execute and sometimes just two if I'm handing the photos to someone else. But I'm just kind of talking from the way I would do it here um, is you know three steps. My VA puts it live. I don't touch it until I have to fulfill it and it sells. All right, like that's really the least amount of touches I can possibly have. Um, and I think there are small ways and examples that you can really find to uh, make that better. One of the things that was great for me, and this might sound silly, but those of you who use a mannequin, a dress form, um, I actually keep my dress form as low as possible so that I don't have to tighten the, um, so there's like usually like a screw handle that tightens into the rod that holds it up and that holds it stationary so that it doesn't wobble. But what I like to do is I like to actually put mine on a table and I unscrew it so that it's loose and then my mannequin can spin. So instead of having to like actually pick up and turn my mannequin for all the shots, I literally can just grab the top and spin and take my pictures as I go. And for me, that's like, that's the that's reducing touches in the process. It's speeding up that process. So really thinking about what you can do for that. You know, the shot still looks the same because I the mannequin's half the size. It's on a table like waist high. Shot's still the same, but man, is it much faster to spin that and just keep moving. Um, so I think little things like that, you really can hone in on and find ways um, to just reduce those touches and make yourself faster, quicker, more e more efficient. So that's number four. And then get into the uh, the fifth one. I, I'm kind of, I buy into this philosophy a lot and uh, I'm definitely, there, there are reasons why you shouldn't um, necessarily right away. Um, but now that like I'm at the stage I'm at where capital isn't as much of a constraint any longer, to me, if you can buy a tool or upgrade a piece of equipment that makes you two seconds faster with every task or one second faster with every task, it becomes worth it to me now. Like when I think about that, I have almost 10,000 pieces of inventory live right now. I have 33, 3,400 active listings. I'm going to fulfill five to 600. Um, oh, sorry. I'm going to, you know, fulfill five to 600 pieces of inventory a month. Like that's a lot of different touches and a lot of activities. If I can buy one piece of equipment and maybe it's a little pricier, but it saves one or two seconds on every single one of those things I have to do, that really adds up. And I mean, as most of you know, time is the most limited resource we have. Like you really, this in essence is the closest you'll ever come to buying time, right? Is doing something faster, paying money to be able to do something faster. Right, that's as close as you're ever going to get to actually buying time, I mean, effectively what you're doing. Um, so like I have a standing desk that's perfectly ergonomic and makes me quicker because I'm standing. Well, yeah, I dropped like 240 bucks on an Ikea, but one of the best investments I ever had. Um, maybe it's buying a mannequin that's, uh, you know, just quicker for you. Or like I said, maybe the better height for you. Maybe it's buying a... Um, Instead of putting marker on tape and putting that in your inventory, maybe it's buying like a label maker or something that's really fast or just goes in the next sequence and prints it down. I don't, and I don't know what those are for each of your businesses. Um, but for me, it's like I spend up whenever I can. I mean, I bought a pallet jack, not because I needed it, like that, but because I like to be able to move them around once they're in the garage and it's just quicker for me. Um, so you just things like that that can be just make you quicker, it's worth the investment if capital isn't a constraint. Because over time, buying that time back and allowing yourself to reinvest that into your business just becomes this huge asset and will make you grow so much quicker. Now, on the flip side of that, I really, really don't think that you should spend up on it if capital is a concern. Like if you can't go out and source this next week because your budget's so limited, you can't buy new inventory, then you're not in a position to be spending money to upgrade your workstation. Right. To me, your workstation gets upgraded when you don't have capital constraints for sourcing. Right. You never want to not be able to bring fresh inventory in and have that because of money and then be spending it on like higher end equipment. Like that just doesn't make any sense. The equipment should come after you have enough of a cash flow that inventory is not a reason that your business is going to shrink um, because you can get by on a shoestring budget you know, doing photos and natural light and, you know, just making it work while you're growing your inventory, you're growing your capital. You're kind of like, I, I grinded through thrift stores for many, many years to get to the point where I'm buying in bulk like this. So I just, I want to be very careful about that. Like if you're just starting out, you're midway through, you have capital constraints. I don't think this last tip five is, you know, spending up on some of these better equipment, I don't think is the right step for you. However, 
if your capital is not a constraint and you're really trying to optimize and buy that time, that is the best way, in my opinion, to buy time is to make you more efficient and quicker in tasks and upgrade your equipment. So those are the five. I'll do a quick recap and we'll jump into some Q&A here. There are some decent questions. Is you know one Tip number one is work in sequence left to right. Uh, number two was keep all your supplies close to you so you're not wasting time getting to them, right? Having them applicable for each station along the way. Design your workstation with the end of the process in mind so that you arrive at the location you want without wasted movement. Um, have the least amount of touches is number four possible in your process. You don't want to redo steps. You don't want to overhandle something. You want to do just enough at a high quality and move it along so that you can do that quick and efficient. And then number five, which you just hit on was if capital is not a constraint, I always encourage you to upgrade your setup to make you faster. Um, if there are pieces of equipment that you can buy to make you better and quicker, it is worth the investment. So those are your five tips for today. Hopefully it's helpful here. It's a Sunday night. Um, I just kind of a little inspired fired from cleaning up my workstation yesterday and then doing some photos. I uh, thought it was a great opportunity while I was fresh in my head to bring this video to you guys. Uh, I'm get, I am getting kind of back in the swing of doing content three times a week. It's really, really nice, enjoyable. Have to give a shout out to my wife. We have a new puppy, so uh, she uh, babysits and makes sure that he stays out of trouble long enough for me to do a couple videos here. Because um, right now in that puppy, that nine nine week stage, they just get into everything. You can't take your eyes off them. So uh, definitely a little shout out to her. But let me grab some of these questions we have and feel free to drop as many as you want in here. It doesn't have to be about this topic. It can be anything reselling related. I will answer answer um let's see so drummer said he's currently reworking his space what a difference it makes on your mindset yeah that's the other thing that's a great point drummer is having a clean and organized uh workstation makes you more excited to do work um if you ever hit this is something that happens to me i'll hit like a mental wall or i just don't feel like doing something because i don't want to go into the mess of a room i have and try to sort through and be productive I am much more productive when things are clean and organized. It's just the way my mind works. Um, so Backyard Flipper asks, what is a reasonable tip for a driver for delivery? And what he's referring to is I have pallets delivered, um, you heard me earlier, um, locally to my house. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things I'm just going to talk about with that is if you have them delivered residentially, which I do, I operate out of my house. Um, I live in a cul-de-sac, so I'm lucky. Uh, so it's easy for him to get a tractor trailer in there. Um, I don't have an HOA to deal with, which is nice. Um, so they bring a tractor trailer with a lift gate. And, uh, and what that means is there's, if you don't know what a lift gate is, basically it's like a motorized lift on the back of a tractor trailer and it will lower, you can actually wheel a pallet using a pallet jack onto the lift gate and then lower it down to ground level. Um, so then you can pull it off. Uh, and so he'll bring that in. And so you can do a couple options. So you can pay for inside delivery, which is pretty expensive. Um, I mean, it usually costs an extra like 60 to $100, depending on the company. Um, and they'll wheel them in to wherever you want. Uh, you can pay just for delivery and lift gate to residential, which means they'll just drop them at the end of your driveway and then they're yours to deal with. Or you can do some type of hybrid, which is what I do. I've gotten really comfortable with my driver. I really like him. He's a great guy. He does all my deliveries. Um, and I basically tip him anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks. I usually tip him 20 bucks a pallet, um, which is probably like, it, it's probably over tipping if you're like, I don't, I don't know. I'm a big believer in over tipping. I think for the things that are vital to your business, I'm a big believer in over tipping. Maybe I'm under tipping to some, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, I'm only getting two to, you know, two, maybe three deliveries in a month max. So, um, you know, I'm dropping a hundred dollars usually to, you know, to him throughout the month, but he takes good care of me. He wheels him in. He makes sure I get to where I want to. I never worry about my deliverer being late or not on time. Like, I think that's the big thing is like he was so appreciative when I did it the first time I gave him 40 bucks for two pallets and he just was like, whoa, you don't have to do that. Like I was super appreciative. And, but the thing was, I just kept telling him like, Hey, you take care of me. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to my business. Like I want to make sure I can take care of you and reciprocate. And like, I'll tell you what, when you get it on Fridays, usually is when I get my deliveries. Um, you, you have, you're in a window of like nine to five, you're going to get your pallets sometime between nine and five. Knowing I have that relationship and knowing that he calls me like right away in the mornings, like, Hey, when are you going to be around? What's the best time for you? He'll plan his route around me. Right. Which is a pretty big deal. Like something like that saves me time and allows me to work. If I'm working from home to receive or whatever, like it's a big deal. So hopefully that it was a lot to answer your question, but I think it's really important. Um, so Josh just said, fire yourself from as many parts of your business as you can find ways to do less. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, <clears throat> and I meant, I'm kind of at that awkward stage where I am outsourcing some things and not others. I've actually had to a point where I outsource most of my things. And now I'm trying to um, bring some of it back in and outsource some different things. I've basically just been trying a bunch of 
just different ways to do stuff. Um, I've gotten a really great system down. We've just started with my VA um, listing on three platforms and she's handling delisting everything for me uh, when it sells. So really all I'm doing is we're out fulfilling and getting the items on Dropbox for her. Um, right now I'm kind of playing around with how much I'm outsourcing photography versus how much I'm doing in-house now because before I was setting all the items live, so I was taking time to price them and research them, but she does a great job pricing. So now she's she's saving me a ton of time in that process. And so now I'm kind of debating with the stage of growth I'm at, if I maybe need to be doing a little more of the photography work since it's right here. And when you're going back to that less touches thing, less bins I'm giving to other people to do stuff, less bringing it back in, like it's right here. And you know, no one's quality is better than yourself for your own business because you just have the extra attention to detail. Um, so this is something I'm debating right now, but I totally agree with that statement. Um, DJ said it's hard with everyday housework and four kids, the hubby, three boys, 13, 22, 25. Imagine if they're little. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm always so impressed by people who can juggle um, you know, any any kids at any age um, with a family doing all that and growing a business. I'm always just so impressed with that. I've got, I have, don't have kids. I have two dogs. I'm a thrilled in uh, this nine, nine week old puppy, and that's enough for me to handle. Uh, Edgar said, asked if I use QuickBooks. I do not. Um, I handle all my own accounting. I'm kind of a data nerd, so um, I update a profit and loss statement monthly that I share with my accountant. Um, I keep, uh, I, I just, this is stuff I enjoy doing. So no, I don't use QuickBooks. Um, I do use Mile IQ. That's like the one kind of bookkeeping tool I do use is Mile IQ. Um, and eventually I'm going to have to look at uh, a different type of accounting software as I grow. Um, I think I can get away with another year of using a spreadsheet, but then I'm going to have to get after it. Um, someone said Flowster is a great site for creating and managing SOPs. And I, I'll have to check that out. And uh, just so anyone who might not know is watching an SOP is standard operating procedure that stands for. So really just writing down and visualizing, you know, in words, your procedures for each step or action in your business. Uh, Aaron said, how would you compare and contrast what you're doing in your business with other sellers? That's a great question, Aaron. Um, it's really hard for me to tell, and this this sounds really bad. I just don't, and I say this probably in a lot of videos, I don't consume a lot of reselling content. Like I'm friends with a lot of resellers. Um, the ones I talk to on a frequent basis, we don't necessarily sell similar things or even our similar businesses. So it's very contrasting in that regard. Um, I would say the closest in model would be Chris over at Daily Refinement. Um, I mean, he sells on three platforms. And honestly, I've been kind of chasing his coattails as far as his model goes for multi-platforming. Um, the big difference is, is that I work full-time. And like this isn't a knock on anyone who's full-time. It's just I have to create my model differently because I'm not available nine to five to manage someone. Um, so I have to have everything done independently away from my home. Um, so just I'm working through those nuances. I think that I'm probably very different in that regard. Um, but that's just me making assumptions. I don't know that for sure. Um, I would say that I'm one of few who does full time and outsources like I do, though. Um, I haven't heard of too many people who do that. Hopefully that answers that question. Oh, Katie calls. I had a great question. Uh, have you ever had to find your own means of transportation for a truck uh, truckload of inventory? I'm thinking, um, so I've been lucky. Um, so well, let me rephrase that. I have gone through the process of quoting, scheduling, and getting something ready to go. And then the company I bought it from actually handled it for me. So I've actually dealt with kind of calling and getting the quotes. Um, I'm actually a part of the green room and someone in the green room, and I feel bad. I'm forgetting their full name right now. Um, but they gave me a ton of information. They actually work for a logistics company. And so they gave me like all the right questions and things to ask. It was super helpful because I was completely in over my head. Um, it's not that complicated once you break it down into the core kind of components. Um, but now I have two, um, I have two suppliers, a main supplier I use, and they handle all the shipping right from the facility to me. They call, they, call, they schedule it. Um, and because they're like semi-local, I mean, local enough when you talk about freight like this, um, I usually can have an order from them within like three days, uh, which is really nice. Like to my doorstep. Uh, the other one I use is a smash lots. It's the one I talk publicly about. Um, they're like my filler kind of pipeline. Um, Jasper handle, handles all the delivery for me. I don't have to deal with it, which is nice. Uh, um, you probably can save... I would say ultimately you probably get a little markup from people um, from their time and they're, you know, handling your order, which I, I think is fair, right? If you're saving me time from the headache of having to schedule it myself, I think that's fair. There's some markup. So you definitely probably save yourself a little bit of money if you did it all yourself from start to finish. Um, 
Josh has asked if I do my own sharing on Poshmark. I do not. I have VAs who do my uh, sharing for me. And that's not to say I spend a lot of time sending offers on Poshmark. So I'll send offers and I'll adjust pricing like on closet clearouts and things like that. I'll spend time doing that. Um, but I have like my base sharing for each day I have outsourced. Um, I don't find that's just, it's, I don't like doing it. So I just, I outsource it pretty much. If I don't like doing something, I try to find a way to outsource it because I pretty much won't end up doing it if I don't like it. Um, Backyard Flipper said, can you do a video devoted to how to order in pallets? Um, I definitely can. I'll have to do some research on it just so that I'm fluent. Um, because I think there's a difference between like, are you talking logistically how to order pallets? Um, you know, cause that's definitely, I can talk through high level on it. Um, but I, maybe I'll see if the guy from the green room would, wouldn't mind be on a video and talk through the logistics, right? Like it would be pretty cool to hear from a logistics person in general who works on the other side, you know, to talk about handling that. Um, maybe I can make that happen. All right, coming up on the half hour, guys. I try to keep all my videos to a half hour or less when I possible. Um, so if you have any other questions, drop them in now. Otherwise, I will um, probably wrap up here in a second. And I've got Sunday night, a little beer night, no workout day. So I have a couple beers. The Hopness Monster from Catawba here, local in Charlotte. It is absolutely delicious. Oh. I don't see any other questions rolling in, which is not a problem. I don't mind wrapping up. I've got quite a bit of shipping to do. Makari has been on fire for me. And actually, I don't know. This, I'll put this question out there. Someone can answer in the comments maybe for me afterwards. If you saw Makari, I keep running up against um, walls or limits on what I can, the amount of things I can list on Makari. So, like, right away, it hit me. I hit 100 items on it. I had people uh, cross posting, and then it was like, Oh, you hit a wall. Boom. You, you need to sell more things before you can list more. And I was like, okay. And so I had to kind of put the brakes on, really start trying to blow things out. And I sold, I've sold, I think I've definitely double digits worth of items in the last 11 days. I've been on Macari, which is to me is astonishing. Um, and then it lifted it like yesterday, like yesterday, mid afternoon, my one VA texted me. She's like, Oh, Hey, I can list more stuff on there. Good. Um, so good to go. Well, then she just hit 200 and gave her the same message today. <laughs> so I'm trying to sell more things to get that lifted. So I don't know if it's going to keep doing that or if I at least get to a point where it's like, okay, you've proven your track record. You're a good seller. Well, you have an uncapped volume. I'm really curious to see how they handle that because um, it's really interesting to me that some Mercari sellers who have been selling it for a long time don't have the best offer feature. But, yeah, I'm a new seller and I have the best offer feature. But, yet they're capping how many things I can list. It's very, very strange, very odd. But I'm just really focusing on shipping like right away, fulfilling the order, trying to keep that stuff so that hopefully they'll lift those limits on me. Um, let's see. Uh, Piper John said, awesome content as always. Thanks. No problem. I appreciate you guys stopping in. I've really been enjoying making content lately. Um, for those of you who's followed me for a long time, I went through a pretty dry spell of not producing content. My business was booming. Like I was trying to scale. I was trying to figure out stuff. I was failing like crazy trying to figure out stuff. I just needed every minute. And so I stopped. And now that I'm back, I realize how much I missed it. And uh, I've really been enjoying interacting with everyone. And I honestly find myself a little more energized and motivated in my own business just through making the content. So uh, I definitely am glad to be back and appreciate all the comments and feedback. I'm getting a lot of Instagram messages lately and with questions, which I love. I love hearing from you guys. That's the best way to get in touch with me if you have questions on Instagram direct message. I do usually get back to all the comments on my videos, but I always answer Instagram just a little bit faster typically. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Um, uh, DJ, I just had a little tip. Said said use pirate ship to save on local international shipping. I'm not sure what that is, and I haven't tried it, but um, um, I will have to Google that afterwards to see what it is. And actually, I do see a question here. I will take because I got I mean, 28 and a half minutes. So we got a minute and a half here. It says Sadie said, "Do you think uh, your other selling platforms are doing so well because you have an online presence?" Some people have said uh, going cross platform is difficult because Mercari need to advertise. Um, uh, I don't think so at all. Honestly, I don't really my brand on here is not tied to really any of my stores. Um, and I actually don't talk about my store names on here very frequently at all anymore. So I don't think so. Um, I think the reason I'm having success cross platforming is because all my listings are so fresh there. Um, and what my V actually made a great point when she was texting me today, she was saying how Macari seems to really, um, reward front loaded. They like to kind of front load, promote their newest listings. And I'm noticing some of the stuff that's been up for like 10 days is getting less and less visibility. So I think Mercari is definitely a platform that really rewards those new fresh listings. Um, so I might have your strategy might be to focus more on rotating like hot items on there. 
I don't really know. Um, Poshmark is kind of one I haven't cracked yet. I just keep I keep selling about two thousand a month on there every month, which is fine. Like it's a great. I wasn't selling that two thousand before I started cross posting, so it's more than worth it. It's just odd. I haven't like like Chris is doing crazy volume from daily refinement. I've talked to some other Poshmark sellers are doing crazy volume. Um, I'm really trying to hone in on the quality and standardization of my photos so they all look the same. I think that's what's hurting me a lot on Poshmark. Um, but anyways, um. Okay, so I think that answered all that. Someone just said pirate ship is a great on shipping if you are not a top rated seller. I am not a top rated seller, so I definitely will check that out. I uh, appreciate that drummer just said that I'm always an inspiration. Well, I, I really appreciate those kind words. Um, I am very inspired by most of you, if not all of you, from the, the comments, the things that you are, are juggling. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing some of the priorities that people juggle and are still growing businesses. So um, I'm small potatoes and I'm balancing very little in comparison to many. So, But I appreciate it very much. Um, all right. I'm going to bounce guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, it is at the top of the half hour. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Um, and I'm going to go get shipping. So, uh, we'll talk to you guys later this week. Hit the like button on the way out, drop comments. If you have questions, appreciate the support guys. See ya.